Hello YouTube, today we're going over double integrals in polar form. So we're used to be doing it in the um, Euclidean space, or just the common coordinate system, x and y, but now we're going to be talking about the polar form and how it's different. So, but first let's start with where kind of where polar form comes from. So this is going to be a basic intro before we get into the meat of the material. Um, so you have this line here. Instead of making the equation, say this was y equals 2x or something. Um, you have a radius instead. If it was a circular object that we're rotating around, like you're going to rotate that green line around the axis, um, and you have an angle at which that ang at which that uh, slope, I guess, of the line is. It has an angle, and with that corresponds an x and y point. So, um, if we use trigonometry, we use sine opposite over hypotenuse, which would be the y coordinate over the hypotenuse, and then with cosine would be the x coordinate over the hypotenuse. And um, tangent of that angle, if we wanted to find the angle, would simply be y over x. So that means if we solve for the x um, for the second equation, you would get x equals r cosine theta. If we solve for the y in the first equation, sine theta equals y over r, we get y equals r sine theta. Now, um, this is kind of a, like our formula that kind of represents a circle. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared, r is being the radius. Um, and then the x and y squared make up that circle. Um, so it's kind of a formula that comes out of it that can be derived. And also one that we don't really need to know too much, but it's worth mentioning, uh, theta equals inverse tangent of uh, y over x. So this is kind of how the, cord the polar coordinate system came uh, to life. So originally we're used to double integrating um, with things like, whoa, I think I screwed that up. should be dx dy, not dxy. Um, I'll fix that in a second. But to convert that to polar, um, you simply plug in those for your x values, and your r value, your y value would go there as well. Um, and then the difference here, I want to note the uh, dx dy, I'll say dy dx in this case, um, is equivalent to put it like that, equivalent to r dr d theta, not r not dr d theta but r dr d theta. Now there's a proof that goes behind that, but we'll not get into that, but just know that those are equivalent. Okay, so let's go with another example problem. So here we have a unit circle, actually, because the radius is 1. Um, and let's see if we can calculate the double integral uh, by finding the area of this unit circle using double integration. So we know that the original angle we're going from 0 all the way around the circle, which would be to 2 pi. So if we're going all the way around the circle, that's how far we're going. So that's the outer limit of integration, d theta. Now we want to find r. That's the hard part. Well, the radius is given to be 1. Um, we've found out because it's the equivalent of the unit circle. So we're going to integrate from 1, but to how much? Well, 0, because uh, it's the full circle, right? Um, you're, you're not starting at any different point. It's starting at the center. So that one was kind of easy. So what if we took out um, that last qu quarter of the circle? Well... Let's set up again. Uh, you would still be integrating from 0, but how far? This, uh, the 1 on the y-axis would be pi over 2, then we would go to pi. So then the next part would be 3 pi over 2, because we're going 3 uh, al almost all the way to 2 pi, but almost there. And then what would be r? r would still be 1 and 0 would still be the same because we're starting at the center. So good job. Uh, that was kind of an easy example here. Now let's go into something that you actually wouldn't really be using polar coordinates for, but it's good to kind of uh, help in terms of understanding the concepts. So what we're going to do here is uh, take tangent of theta, um, which would be radical 3 over 1. So tangent is y over x. The y coordinate is shown on the y axis, and the x coordinate is given by that purple line there. And if we find theta, we would get theta to be pi over 3 in radians. So that's how far we're going to go. So we're starting at 0. We're not rotating anywhere. We're going to go to pi over 3 is the degree angle. So that's where the limits of integration occur. Then we need to look at this triangle more. If we make theta a fixed line and just say call it r um, and use trigonometry to kind of solve for it, we have cosine of theta equals 1 over r, 1 being the adjacent, r being the hypotenuse, and then we solve for r, and we get 1 over cosine, and then, oh, 1 over cosine, that's secant theta. So that's the angle of like kind of which we're going to be, or like the method of solving for the limits of integration here, so 0 to secant theta. We'll do another example, that one was kind of hard. Uh, we'll do this again, 
but we'll do on the other side of the triangle. So this will make it a little different. Um, so we have this same thing, tangent of theta equals uh, y over x, y being the, yeah, there we go. I think I got that, yeah, y over x. Yeah, because the triangle is flipped. Okay, so that means we have theta equal to pi over 6. And um, then if we make, um, if we solve for using trigonometry again, solve for theta one more time, um, but we're actually we actually solving for r. So solve for r, and then you would get cosecant theta, and that would be your limits of integration as well, because you've got to take a look at that triangle once more closely. So now we'll do this one. I'm just asking here to convert into polar form. If you want, you can solve it. I'll solve it if you want, but just take a good practice to see if you can convert this into polar form. So notice that x squared plus y squared is r squared, so you're going to want to do that. Um, I kind of went ahead and did the rest here, but um, I should draw out, draw out a picture, but the limits of integration here, you should be familiar with uh, the formula for a circle. It does make another circle. In fact, it is the unit circle again, those limits of integration, so you would be going from 0 to 2 pi again, and the radius would be 1, because x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared, and then that's how you kind of get square root of 1 minus y squared and negative square root of 1 minus y squared. I probably should have showed that, but it's the same unit circle as back here. Same equation for that circle. Uh, which would, yeah. Okay, so now let's see if we can solve it. Um, let's keep going. So we have to do some u sub. So u is going to be r squared plus 1, and du is going to be 2r dr, but we'll uh, make that into 1 half du equals dr, r dr. Um, and then plug in um, our u substitution, um, but we need to know how to uh, we need to know how to integrate uh, the antiderivative of ln u or the natural log. So you have to think, oh yeah, got to remember that formula here. That kind of comes from um, what's it called? Integration by parts. This formula is derived. Um, but if you know it offhand, it would be x ln x minus x plus c. Um, knowing that information, you plug that in. Uh, you get those values, and then you plug in those values once more, uh, once you integrate again, and you should get that number. Um, I'm not going to simplify it for the sake of time, but I hope this kind of helped as an intro to polar coordinates before we get into the meat of double integration. But just kind of knowing where this comes from really helps a lot, like this slide right here I think is a good representation of the gist of the information of this video.